Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will be continuing with the study of highest weight representations. So, let us fix uh, V being finite dimensional highest weight representation with generated by V small v which is a highest weight vector with highest weight lambda. Okay. So, note that that means H v is given by lambda of H v for all H in H and X v is 0 for all X in n plus. So, we actually defined the Casimir operator and then we saw that the Casimir operator acts as some scalar times on V and this Casimir operator the scalar is uh, given very explicitly in terms of uh, C in terms of the lambda. So, recall so this is given by summation uh, d i square i range from 1 to n plus summation d i minus d j i less than j less than or equal to n plus 1 greater than or equal to 1. So, where we take this h lambda to be this d 1. Uh, so, d 1 e 1 1 plus etcetera plus d n plus 1 e n plus 1. E n plus 1 n plus 1. So, we have this very explicit formula for the scalar. Uh, so, and we can actually simplify this scalar. So, I will leave that as uh, exercise. So, if you take uh, the C lambda, then you can simplify the second sum as summation d a square and then plus summation. Okay. So, if you think about it actually like you do not need this summation. So, you can just simply run it over i range from 1 to n because you can collect all the coefficients of d i and then if you collect it you can easily see that this is n plus 2 minus 2 i times d i. Okay. So, this is the formula that you get it for C lambda. So, this is very very explicit in terms of lambda. So, now we are going to actually use this explicit formula in order to actually conclude something more about uh, uh, the C lambdas. So, here is the proportion. So, this is somewhat very powerful observation in some sense. So, if you take uh, this uh, C lambda, now C lambda is defined for any lambda okay, because H is identified with H star. So, you take any dominant weight lambda, you will be able to define C lambda. So, now for any lambda dominant, okay, so we can conclude that this C lambda must be always non-negative and we have the equality C lambda is 0 if and only if lambda being 0. So, this is somewhat very important thing. And if lambda mu both are dominant and la, mu is uh, smaller than lambda with respect to the dominance order. So, then one can conclude that C lambda must be greater than or equal to C mu. And in this case the equality happens. So, in this case the equality happens. if and only if lambda equal to mu. Okay. If mu less than or equal to lambda and C lambda equal to C mu that implies lambda equal to mu that is what it means. So, what that is mu less than or equal to lambda of course, lambda mu both given to be dominant and C lambda equal to C mu this implies lambda equal to mu. So, this is something very important observation. So, let us actually uh, do uh, one by one. So, since we have written everything in terms of uh, the standard basis, so we have to actually translate everything to that. So, recall, 
So, lambda of h i being non-negative integer that is same as the definition of lambda being dominant for i range from 1 to n. Now, this is same as saying that uh, So, if you write this h lambda in terms of the standard basis, so then this lambda of h i you can actually easily conclude because this is being b of h lambda h i and h i being e i i minus e j j. So, this is exactly given by d i minus d i plus 1 and which is non negative integer. Okay. So, this is just translates to d i minus d i plus 1 being non negative integer. So, now if you actually look at the formula, okay, so this means what this means. So, this is true for each i range from 1 to n. So, now this means d 1 must be greater than or equal to d 2 greater than or equal to etcetera greater than or equal to d n plus 1. So, that is the meaning of uh, uh, this lambda of h i is being uh, dominant weight. Okay. So, there is actually somewhat to slight difference between considering GLN representations as well and SLN representations. Okay. So, this change of basis always uh, actually matters a lot, okay. but this the only thing that matters. So, we have to consider finite dimensional integral representations of GLN. If you are interested in actually uh, pushing down to the SLN. Okay. So, so because the integrality is actually always there, uh, so we always assume that the coefficients that we are getting, okay, so those are all like integers. So, we are going to work with only uh, the integral combination of epsilon guys, nothing more. So, that is what I mean. Okay. So, we take this z plus span of epsilon 1 etcetera epsilon n plus 1 and this is where we are working. So, this is where we are doing the computation, we are doing the computation. But anyway like here, uh, so this is something like nothing to do with uh, uh, so, when, when, when we consider GLN representation, I will explain what I mean by uh, this uh, translations. Okay. So, now uh, lambda being just dominant uh, just says that lambda h i is being non negative integer. So, that just translates this d i is being decreasing. Okay. But the thing is the only thing that we have actually encoded that the difference d i minus d i plus 1 is always non negative integer. So, we are not saying anything about d i s being integers. Okay. But in practice uh, whenever we want to consider SLM representation it is okay to consider like all the d i s are integers. So, that will be equivalent to considering like either d 1 is integer or d n plus 1 is integer. So, that demand is always there. Okay. But here we do not need to worry. So, these computations are nothing like it is not going to affect anything. So, we have this uh, uh, constraint. So, now if you go back to your uh, equation you can easily see that. So, this equation actually has something like this. So, these terms are already non negative. So, d i squares are already non negative uh, as long as okay, d i s are actually real numbers then we are in business. Okay. So, we do not need to. So, for example, like 
we can just simply take d n plus 1 to be 0 to begin with. So, when you actually do the translation from uh, the standard basis to actually the SLN basis. Okay. So, what I mean by standard basis? The standard basis is E11 etcetera ENN, but from this we have to go to E11 minus E22 etcetera ENN minus EN plus 1 N plus 1. So, that translation is what we are talking about. So, let us make uh, everything precise. So, let us observe something about this H lambda. So, lambda is coming from the dominant weight. So, that means all we know is lambda of Hi is being non-negative integers. Okay. So, this is what is encoded in this information, but to begin with lambda plus is contained in lambda. So, lambda Hi is all of them are integers that is al already there. So, if I take lambda, if I write it in terms of the uh, like either alpha i's or omega i's. So, let us write it in the omega i's basis. Then this is given by summation lambda of h i omega i, where i energy from 1 to n. So, this is what lambda and this is well defined element in h star because h star is nothing but span of alpha 1 etcetera alpha n. So, where alpha i is given by epsilon i minus epsilon i plus 1, indeed the bar. Okay. So, let us start putting the bar. <coughs> so, now what is h lambda? h lambda is defined to be b of h lambda of h is given by lambda of h. So, in particularly B of H lambda H i is given to be lambda of H i. So, this is how H lambda is defined. Now, if you take H lambda and then if you write it in terms of the usual basis of H, okay, so that is indeed you are writing let us say some, some scalars, let us say A 1 h 1 plus etcetera plus a n h n. So, then from this you can actually see like what will be a i s. So, b of h lambda h i. Okay. So, maybe we can actually write it in terms of uh, h i star basis. Yeah, maybe we will write it like so, we should write it in the H i star basis. So, then it is easy to see that B of H lambda H i is given by the A i. So, now this is nothing but lambda of H i. Okay. So, this is the A i that is coming in when you write it in terms of omega i. So, this is the A i that you are getting and these are all non-negative integers. Okay. Since uh, this uh, h i uh, to h i star, okay, maybe you can actually work it out very explicitly. The change of basis, so that is going to be over integers. So, so because of that, so if you rewrite this h lambda in terms of h i's okay let's say summation some b i h i we can conclude that this b i's must be rational so that is for sure so this must be rationals 
ok. So, I will leave it as exercise the change of basis or the transaction matrix ok. The transition matrix from the basis H i to H i H j star is defined over rationals. So, that is good enough for us ok and it is invertible matrix. So, so if you rewrite in terms of the other basis, so you are going to actually get coefficients from Q. But now, if these B i's are coming from Q, then what will happen to these D i's? These D i's also will come from Q, ok. At least for sure we can assume that these are all coming from Q. So, that is why we can easily see these, uh, these numbers or non-negative uh, real numbers. So, now this relations actually tells you that d 1 is greater than or equal to etcetera d n plus 1 ok. So, since d 1 is greater than or equal to d n plus 1. Now, if you compute d i minus d j for i less than j, you can see that this is nothing but d i minus d i plus 1 plus d i plus 1 minus d i plus 2 plus etcetera plus d j minus d j minus 1 minus dj. And since all these numbers are in the decreasing order, so you can see that this is all greater than or equal to 0. So, this tells you that this c lambda is at least summation d i square which is greater than or equal to 0. So, whenever lambda dominant, so we can see that c lambda must be non-negative. And now, from this calculation, you can easily see that C lambda is 0 if and only if the summation d i square is 0, d i being rational that means if and only if d i is 0 for each i and that means lambda is 0, ok. So, this just means lambda 0. So, now we will again use similar observation uh, and then prove this second statement. The second statement says whenever lambda mu both are dominant, so you know that both C lambda C mu they are all non-negative integers, but you can you can conclude that C lambda must be bigger than C mu and the equality happens only if lambda equal to mu. So, that is uh, again like comes from the explicit formula. So, maybe I will actually just indicate what one needs to prove and then I will leave it as exercise. So, here is the exercise. So, if you compute uh, this C lambda minus C mu, so you take this gamma i to be these numbers, the difference between uh, these numbers. So, let us uh, write it as d 1 lambda plus etcetera plus d i lambda minus d 1 mu plus etcetera plus d i mu. So, where what is uh, d 1 lambda? So, lambda, so h lambda you are writing as summation d i lambda e i i, where i range from 1 to n plus 1. So, then if you use this notation, then c lambda minus c mu is nothing but summation gamma i, i range from 1 to n times c i minus c i plus 1 plus sorry d i lambda d i plus 1 lambda plus d i mu minus d i plus 1 mu plus 2. So, this is what you get. So, we already know that lambda being dominant d i is greater than or equal to d i plus 1. So, this term is greater than or equal to 0 and this term is greater than or equal to 0 that is being lambda being dominant and mu being dominant. Now, since lambda 
greater than or equal to mu if you write it in the epsilon i basis that translates to actually this gamma i being greater than or equal to 0 okay so this translates to gamma i being greater than or equal to 0 so this is something i will leave it as exercise so then you can easily conclude that c lambda is greater than or equal to c mu and now c lambda equal to c mu so that implies you can easily see that so this gamma i must be 0 there is no other option so gamma i must be 0 for all i and this would imply that so these terms all of them are same so that that means lambda equal to mu okay so maybe this contains three exercise so this is one this is two and this is three so these are also just simple computations so that you will be able to comfortably do and this actually tells you that uh, whenever c lambda equal to c mu then we get lambda equal to mu and c lambda is always greater than or equal to c mu if lambda mu are both dominant and lambda is greater than or equal to mu with respect to the dominance order. So this is all simple translations. So using this we can prove our theorem. So our theorem actually says so v is a let us say finite dimensional representation. So then v is a highest weight representation if and only if v is irreducible. So we already proved this other way. So because v is being finite dimensional, so we must have a highest weight vector. So once you pick non-zero highest weight vector, then if you generate module uh, generated by that vector that must be exactly v if v is irreducible. So that will force that v being highest weight representation. So now uh, we will prove the converse. So conversely assume that v is a yeah, highest weight representation of course finite dimensional is also there. So then we know that c v acts as identity on v up to a scalar that is given by c lambda. So this is already there. So now if you choose v dash as before being irreducible submodule. So this is g submodule of smallest dimension. So that means that forces this is irreducible. So then you can easily see that C V restricted to V dash is going to be again C lambda identity on V dash. But we already know using Schur's lemma, so this must act as a scalar, then scalar because this is again being uh, again uh, this V irreducible implies highest weight representation of let us say some highest weight mu, then this has to be C mu identity on V dash. So now this uh, lambda is already highest weight for capital V and mu is being weight for capital V that will force that mu must be less than or equal to lambda. So this is there and C mu must be equal to C lambda with this equality. So now lambda comes from highest weight of this capital V so this must be dominant and mu is the highest weight of this v dash that is highest weight representation so that also must be dominant. So all these things we gave it for free so that should imply that lambda equal to mu. But we already know that uh, this uh, dimension of v lambda must be one dimensional because this is just spanned by this c v. So that says this uh, highest weight vector that spans this v dash. So let us uh, let us actually call it uh, u g v dash that generates v dash. So this v dash must lie inside this one dimensional space c v because they have same weight and the weight space is one dimensional. 
So, that forces that this V dash is equal to V because V dash and V they are multiple of each other. Obviously, V dash V be both non-zero, so the multiple must be non-zero multiple, non-zero scalar. So, that forces that V dash is indeed equal to V. So, this proves that uh, any finite dimensional representation, high straight representation must be irreducible. So, this is indeed uh, very nice proof using the Casimir operator. So, now uh, if you actually go back uh, uh, to our actually the climb that we made, okay. so let us make it as a theorem. So, what happens like, so we still have not proved that the existence of uh, either the highest weight representation or irreducible representation that corresponds to the weight lambda, okay. let us say lambda is given dominant. But what is about the uniqueness? Okay, There are two things that is uh, coming up very naturally. So, the uniqueness is easy to prove. Okay. Let uh, V and W be two highest weight representations corresponding to the highest weight lambda. Okay. So, we are fixing lambda which is must be dominant because we assume everything is finite dimensional. So, then we are saying that let us say there are two highest weight representations. So, then we prove that V must be isomorphic to W. So, that means up to isomorphism there can be at most one highest weight representation that corresponds to the weight lambda. So, this theorem actually allows us to focus on the existence. So, what is the proof? This is again very clever proof. Look at V direct sum W. So, call this V to be the generator of capital V of weight lambda. Call W to be the generator of W of weight lambda. Then it is easy to see that this V W. So, this is going to be highest weight vector highest weight vector of weight lambda. So, by definition of highest weight we know that H v is lambda H v and then X v is 0. Similarly, H w is lambda of H w and X, X w is 0 and this is true for all X in n plus and this is true for all H in H. So, now using these equations you can easily conclude that this H V W must be lambda of H V W and X V W must be 0. So, that means this is highest weight vector. So, now take the module U which is generated by this highest weight vector, then we know that it must be irreducible representation from our previous theorem. So, now we have the following projections, take this projection on V from V direction W to V and similarly we have this projection on W. So, this is the projection on V and this is the projection on W. So, projection on the first coordinate and projection on the second coordinate and projections are G module maps that is easy to see. So, what we are going to do? We are going to actually restrict these projections to U. So, you have the map from U to V which is given by pi v restricted to u. Similarly, you have a map from u to w which is given by pi w restricted to u. Note that the highest vector v comma w that will be mapped to v here and then this will be mapped to w here and both of them are non-zeros. So, that means both the maps are non-zero maps. Now, using Schur's lemma, you can see that all the modules that are involved in this uh, picture all of them are irreducible modules. So, that forces that so both these maps they are isomorphs. So, that implies that W must be isomorphic to V. Okay. So, this actually tells so given lambda which is dominant there is at most one irreducible representation corresponding to 
lambda. Okay, so we will actually having proved the existence, so we will actually uh, get to the existence in the next class. So, I will stop here. Thank you.